let's apply some transitions. Now what we might want to do is we might want to start off with a dip from black. So right at the very beginning we might want this to start with black and come up to actually reveal our beach. Now our transitions are found under the effects panel and at the bottom of all these options you see you've got some says video transitions. So if I open up the video transition I'm actually going to go to the dissolve category, the second one down and these are the ones that I use the most if I'm honest with you. And we're going to start with dip to black However, if you grab it and drop it at the beginning of your timeline and let go, you'll see that it actually acts as a dip from black. So if I hit my spacebar, I'm just going to turn off the audio so we don't have to hear that. You can see that it comes with a dip from black. Now, if you want it to actually take even longer, I'm just going to zoom in slightly, you can actually trim it out. So if I go to the end of it, you'll see I've got a little trim tool and I can pull it out so that it takes even longer to come up from black. So if I hit my spacebar now, it comes up much slower. So you can actually play with how quick these transitions happen in the timeline just by trimming them up and trimming them down. So that's bringing a dip from black, although it's called dip to black, at the beginning of my timeline. But this first cut between the beach and the sea is actually quite a big stretch for people. And what I might want to do is put a cross dissolve to dissolve from one thing to another. Now notice here that there is actually a little yellow box around the cross dissolve saying that this is the default transition for Premiere Pro. Now you can change that if I wanted for instance it to be dip to black. If I right click on dip to black I could choose set selected as default transition. So you can change them. But I'm going to leave cross dissolve as the actual default transition although some people do like to go for the new film dissolve which came in the CS 5.5 which is actually uh, keeps the gamma higher. In fact, I'll do that. I'll right click and set the film dissolve as now my default transition. Now, what I can do is I can click, drag and drop it onto the actual clip here and it'll put it in the middle. However, I can also select the clips and if I wanted to do it over multiple clips, I can select as many as I like or alternatively, I can select clips holding my shift key so that not all of them are selected and go to sequence and then we can go down to apply default transition to selection click to apply that and notice that where the two meet the default transition has been applied now if I'd have chosen all of the clips it would have gone between all of them but because I used my shift key to select some of them I've got a default transition for both the video and the audio and if I just click play you won't hear the audio but you'll see that we've got a a nice dissolve between the two and let's do a nice dissolve between these two let's have a little look and you've got a nice dissolve between those so we've got nice dissolves we can drag them we can actually scale them make them smaller or larger you can also change how they work now you can edit them if I double click it you'll see that it actually brings up the effects controls and I can actually edit where these things work and where they start and where they finish for instance at the moment it's one second and two frames if I want to make it a lot bigger, four seconds or whatever, I can make the duration say two seconds let go. That's now a two second duration. You can see it here. However, mm, we've got something here saying there's not enough footage to be able to do that. I'll explain that more in a minute. I'm just going to take that back to about one second and 11 frames. Still too much. Back to one second and two frames. And we know that it's going to work perfectly okay. You can also change where it starts and where it finishes. So for instance, at the moment it's slap bang in the middle but here I can click and drag and take it so that it starts at the cut so that we have the whole of this clip playing and then at the cut the transition starts and I could move it the other way but I'm going to get that same problem now if I let go I'm going to get this hashed area and effectively it's telling me there's not enough frames to be able to make this work so let's have a little look what that means if I pull my current time indicator into this area here, what you might see if you look very closely over here at the program monitor is that the first few frames, in fact I'll make it a bit longer so we can see it a bit more clearly. There we go. The first few frames as we start the transition are actually still. It's taking the first frame of the next clip and copying it, which gives us a very still transition look until we actually get to where there is enough head footage for the next clip so that we can actually start to see that movement. So when I get this hash area here, it's telling me that there are not enough frames 
to be able to cross dissolve with. In other words, this clip has not got any head footage. I can just demonstrate that by going to the trim monitor. And if we look at it, we can see that this is this clip here, and this is all the head footage that we've got. This is what's being used in that cross dissolve. So there's lots of tail footage we can cross dissolve out for as long as we like with all this footage. This is where the clip actually ends and this is spare footage to cross dissolve. But this is where the next clip begins and we've only got a little bit of footage at the beginning. And if you try and use too much, you're going to end up with this hashing or this hash area here which is telling us that we've got a real problem. Okay, I'll just select that clip again and we can see this hash area telling us that all it's going to do is actually just duplicate the frames and it can look very static. Okay, so I'm just going to take that one back so it's in the middle and now when it goes through it's going to go with motion with the second clip straight away because it's using head footage that's there ready to go. So these are standard transitions which we can edit and play around with here. You don't actually have to see the actual source if you like, you can turn them off here and you'll just have the A to B. And you click here and you can actually get a go through for what it looks like. Let's actually show the footage. This will play it and play through the transition. And you can actually see it. It's actually going through here, but it's ever so small and very, very difficult to see. So what if I want to change that in the timeline? What if I want to see what it's like? So if I go to the middle here, the up and down arrow, if you want to get to the absolute center. So I've got to the absolute center. And if I do my shift K or play around, we can actually have a look at that transition with the play around and then I can if I want trim it slightly and with all my recording software it's getting a little bit difficult to see but it does carry on playing so if you want to actually dynamically trim your transition in the timeline make sure that you've got loop selected and if you've got loop selected with the panel menu and you do the shift K to do play around then you can actually physically get in there and actually change these transitions and see what the changes look like without having to start and stop. Okay, so that's applying transitions of the standard type. Of course, there are an awful lot of wild and wacky transitions and you can buy lots of wild and wacky transitions. So I'm just going to apply a wild and wacky transition somewhere along my timeline. So we're going between some birds and going look at the castle. So if we're going to apply a transition here, let's choose something that's a little bit different let's do a special effect so we can open up special effect and look at say displace take displace and drop it over the middle and then we can have a little look and we can see that we get some slightly weird looks now I don't particularly like that one if I don't like it I don't need to delete it all I do is go and get another one so I can go to iris and I can say to iris cross and just drop it over the top of the other one and then I can get a different type of look straight away so you don't need to delete them, you can just click and drag and drop something else on top of there entirely and get a completely different look just by choosing whatever else you want. But as I say, generally speaking, the more weird and wacky and wild it is, the less likely you are to use it, unless of course you're trying to make some kind of comment about your story. And it is all about storytelling. At the end of the day, it's about your audience. It's not about what you like. It's not about what you think your boss is going to like. Really, at the end of the day, it's what is the audience going to want and what is best going to help you in your storytelling. Now, the final thing I might want to do here is I actually might want to go back to my dissolves and possibly put a dip to black right at the end so that when we get to the end of our timeline, we're going to have a nice dip to black to say that we've finished.